my prospect. Uh, so I come with about six years experience from SEO in the UK market, working both media agency side and search technology side. Uh, so any questions that you still have remaining from Alex's uh, workshop, you can, you can ask after the presentation. During the presentation, we can just restrict it to the content that's in the, in the PowerPoint. So I'm just going to go through something called campaign automation. So not to be confused, it's not a replacement to AdWords which uh, is what Amit went through. It's more of an extension of AdWords, how we can automate that whole process that Amit took us through of keyword creation and bid management to get the most out of your AdWords campaign. So I'll just, um, just get to that. So just a brief history of time. Uh, so first of all, we started with the ad serving network, sort of the early 90s. Uh, so the ad serving networks were called Google and Bing. These are where the ads are actually served. So AdWords is a great example. Beyond that, we have more third-party tools coming. So companies like BidBuddy and Make Me Top were there just to look at the bidding process of how it works in AdWords, automate that process, um, and provide the maximum ROI for all of the clicks that you get. So any cost that you get is very transparent, and the bid management is automated, so you're maximizing your ROI. These days, we have something called campaign automation. So it goes through the whole process of um, keyword and ad copy creation for you. Uh, it looks at path to conversion across lots of different touch points, different channels. And finally, it looks at the, uh, the ability to bid manage, automate your bid management on a portfolio basis. So just, um, just some research from the UK market. These are just the barriers to uh, pay search uh, for some of the startups like yourself. So high CPC, which a lot of you can probably relate to, accounts for about 33%. Uh, lack of resource, uh, expertise, lack of expertise to do it, around 35%. Uh, lack of budget, again, it's a common problem for startups in terms of starting the SDM traffic. So what is campaign automation? Uh, so the way I see it, it's made up of four basic building blocks. So the first one is automated rules and portfolio bid management. So Amit briefly took you through the process of setting your bids, high-performing keywords, you put your bids up, etc. This whole process is done by an algorithm through a campaign automation tool. Uh, the next step is dynamic keyword and copy creation. So how can we use the inventory that's actually on your website to always be reflecting your keywords and your ad copy at all times? So the classic example is for e-commerce clients. How can we make sure that anytime someone types a product that's on your website, it appears your ad appears in the Google search listings with a relevant ad, with the price in there, with how much stock is left. So I'll go through how that process would work. Uh, Cross-channel integration and attribution. So how does SCM work with other channels? How does it integrate with display, for example? If someone sees a display ad or clicks on a display ad, but then finally converts on an SCM ad, maybe two or three days later, how can we start to track that? How can we attribute where the sales and revenue from that final sale should go? Finally, flexible scheduled and on-demand reporting. So top-line reporting um, is, is basically what you need. How can, how can I see which keywords are working for me, which ad groups are working for me? How can I get in an Excel sheet very quickly, daily email to me? So just, just to go through some of the benefits of campaign automation, so I won't spend too long on this. Um, the bid management obviously allows you to have more time. You don't have to go through each keyword, manage each bid manually. You've got the tool in place and it will manage your bids so that you maximize to whatever your ROI or your cost per goal or cost per lead or cost per conversion target might be. Um, improvement in quality as well. So because we're creating all of these relevant keywords and ad copy based on the inventory that's on your website, you're obviously you're going to get a better quality score. You're going to get better quality, therefore your ads will appear higher for any given cost. So attribution is another one. So I mentioned that path to conversion cycle as well. If you can see which traffic is driving the research period of your customer, that's where you know where you have to put the budget. It's no good just putting all of the budget into purely SDM because something else feeds the research period before that. So I'll explain how that works as well. And finally, the reporting as well. Just to make sure the reporting is as simple as possible, to make sure you can look at a report immediately and say, this is what's working for me, this isn't what's working for me. So just in terms of who should use campaign automation, there's a bit of a misconception that people with large budgets on SDM should be using these tools. 
actually any advertiser with a clear ROI, CPA, cost of conversion type goal can be using campaign automation. The bid management will then maximize your conversion from revenue to that goal. Um, again, advertising with large inventory and dynamic pricing. So again, if you're only an e-commerce site, you have a huge inventory, you need to create a keyword list for this whole inventory. How, how can you do that without having to go through the manual effort of doing so? These tools will go through the process of doing that for you. Um, and again, advertisers who generally have customers that take more than one visit before they make a conversion. That's where we can use the attribution to understand what are the different touch points before the, the final set. So how much does it cost? So deals can be uh, struck directly with the technology or through a third party agency like a vendor, a partner that you work with, who has the expertise in such, using such technology. Um, so the fee itself is generally worked out as a percentage of spend. Um, and again, depends on your propensity to spend. The more you spend, the generally the cheaper the, the technology cost will, will be. Just, uh, just an example of, of how it works. So the conversion code is based on the thank you page. This is what um, Anna alluded to earlier. So the JavaScript code will be placed on the thank you page of your website. In this JavaScript code, at the time of conversion, you can pass back different values. So if you're selling goods, you can pass back the revenue amount of the goods, the basket value. You can pass back an order ID, for example, the user's name, email address. So when you install the pixel, you can actually bring in all of these different values, which will help you with your marketing efforts. So that's the first step of using one of these tools. Second step, when a user clicks on one of the SDM ads that, again, I alluded to earlier, they're cookied by one of these tools. Um, by cookie, it means that a little piece of text is placed on that user's computer for up to 90 days. So we can track what that user does after each click for another 90 days. How many times he revisits his site, and what pages he views on your website, uh, and eventually what he buys. Uh, finally, so that it goes into these tools, just a, a couple of examples, Kentry and Marin, of two um, campaign automation tools. Uh, but essentially, the, the data comes from Google itself. So I mentioned before that these tools aren't a replacement for Google or an extension. So all of the impressions data, all of your clicks data, all of your cost data comes directly from Google, but your conversion data, if there happens to be a sale or revenue, comes from these tools. And then finally, these tools look at the sale data that's come in and combine it with your click data, decide which keywords are working for you, and appropriately bids the keywords up that are doing well, and bids the keywords down that are not performing. So you just, it saves you the whole effort of going through this and doing this yourself. So who are the major players? So some of these names might be familiar, some of them might not be. But the, the major players, Marin Software, Kenshu, and Double Pick Search, which is a, a Google product actually, and then some of the other names that we have there as well. So some of these names you might become more familiar with in the, in the future. So just to start off with bid management, just to give you, um, I guess, a bit of background on how bid management works. So the position on the page in SDM that you pay for is dependent on two things. One of them is the maximum that you're willing to pay for each particular keyword. We call that your max CPC bid. The other is the function, we call it quality score. So quality score is actually a relevancy score. So the better, the more relevant your ad, the more relevant your keyword to your landing page, the better your quality score will be, in essence. Um, and the idea is that the better your quality score, the higher you'll be up on the page for any given um, position. But interestingly, this is also based on your competitor's quality score as well. So the amount that you actually pay per click is dependent on the ad rank of the person below you, Ad rank is this formula here, the CPC bid plus the quality score, divided by your own quality score plus one cent on top of that. So that's what your price will be. And this example shows actually that advertiser one has a max bid of two dollars, let's say, and he has a quality score of 10. Therefore, his ad rank becomes 20, and he's in position one. But interestingly, advertiser two is bidding four dollars. So he's bidding more than the person that's in the top position. The reason he's in second position is that his quality score stands at four, which is less than half of the person that's top. So it shows how important quality is to, to make sure you're paying the least possible cost for any given click on any given keyword. Does it all make sense? Yeah. What is the quality score? So Google determines the quality score. Google, quality score is a, a Google determined index. Yahoo and Bing have their own such thing, it's called a quality index. 
And the people, as you know, it's quality school. And it is determined largely by, as Annie mentioned, click-through rate. Click-through rate is a big factor of quality school for any given position. Can you do something like that? So let me just give you an idea of why quality score is important for Google. Google's primary objective is to make the ad relevant to the user. So it wants to reward the advertisers who have made their ad relevant to the users. So like the, the ingredient of the quality score is if you have a high CTR, um, you get a high quality score. So there are a lot of factors, but CTR is one of the main factors. Let me also tell you why Google actually does that and actually beneficial to the search engine also. Let's say, suppose your ad was shown 100 times. You are bidding $10 and all the users give you only one click. So Google makes only money on the click, so they make $10. But suppose some other advertiser was paying only one dollar, but he got 20 clicks for the same 100 impressions. Then Google will make double the money at one tenth the cost. So basically, if your CTR, if a lot of people click on your ads, that means your ad is relevant to the user search query. So if you can do advertising on Google AdWords and make your ad copy very, very relevant to the search intent the user has searched for, you will get rewarded by search engines. They also will end up making more money, but you will get the same clicks at one tenth the price, one fifth the price. But is quality score uh, publicly available? Can it be accessed through an API? Yes. So basically, when you go to the AdWords interface, you click on there, it tells you what the quality score is. So earlier you should say good, bad, ugly, not ugly, actually. But now it actually gives you a point. It tells you the quality score is 5 or 3 or 10. So you will know that, okay, this is the uh, keywords that you have when you have a low quality score. You have to make that ad copy or the landing page something more relevant to the user because Google is penalizing it. And is user experience on the landing page also taken? Yes. Into so there are a lot of factors that influence quality, so they don't give it in black and white what those factors are. But CTR is considered a very important factor. Your landing page, bounce rates, people coming and coming back to Google. So let's think about this. The user searches for a keyword, goes to Google, comes back to Google again, and clicks on the next advertiser. I mean, the first advertiser did not answer the user's question. You will get penalized on the quality score if a lot of users are doing the same thing. What is bounce rate? A bounce rate is when a user comes to a website, doesn't do anything and goes back. So the bounce rate from different different analytics packages are uh, treated differently. But Google Analytics treats it as that if you come to a page, don't do anything. That means don't click on any other links in the page. You could stay there for five minutes, read everything, and go back. But that's also to be considered bounce. So the Google Analytics treats it as if a user does not come and engage with you, doesn't click on any part, other part of your website, close the browser window, goes back to Google, it's a bounce. What is the threshold for a bounce rate which should not really get us worried? So the thing is that there is no threshold. The unfortunate or fortunate part about search is there are millions of keywords. Each keyword has its intent. So let's say somebody is somebody searching for your office address. He clicks on the office address, he goes to a page where your office address is given. His purpose is accomplished he will go away. So if you have a 100% bounce rate on that kind of intent, that's fine. But suppose somebody is searching for knowing more about mutual funds. You take into a page which has different kinds of mutual funds, and still nobody is trying to analyze and going to any of the other mutual funds, then you have a problem. Even a bounce rate of 50% of theirs should be allowing. So I think what you should do is you should group your keywords together, see the user's intent, see if your point, the planning page where they are coming to is answering the question or not. If you have a high bounce rate based on the keyword it is, so I think the problem is search is people try to average it out. So what happens is when you average it out, you don't get any actual insight at all. So my recommendation always is group your keywords together, group your intent, and then calculate whether a certain bounce rate for a certain set of keywords is alarming and a certain bounce rate of a certain keyword is alarming or not. So unless we group it, you will not get any actual insight what you need to do. Do we, uh, do we have access? Uh, to I think let what Ronnie continue for <laughs> this. I just answered one question, but I think we can take it offline during lunch. Any questions? So we're not doing questions right now. We're at the end. Uh, so actually, I just took over Ronnie's presentation to answer just one quality score question. But I'm, I'm going to be taking a session. Uh, I think what we do is that let's limit our questions right now to this. Yes, yeah, so it's relevant to what we are talking sure. about. So I'll take this one last question. Uh, so you said the quality score, I mean, either way, whoever wants to answer it. Uh, the question is that the quality score of your own website is available. But if you cannot compare it to your competitor's quality score or how much your competitor is bidding, then how is this automation going to help? So actually, what they're doing is they're actually comparing competitors. So when you see your quality score, actually it's not your quality score. It's your quality score in relation to competition. Because if you get an 8, see what they do is, let's say they show your ad in number one position. 
then they'll show the computer as a number one position. You get a higher CTR, he gets a lower CTR, you get a higher quality score. So even each position has different CTR. So we rank number five. In your competition is also rank number five. If you get a lower CTR there, that means your competition is higher CTR there, you get a better quality score. But so so every rank as opposed to a rating. Yeah, so rank is different than two things, as you said. You know, like it's the price you pay and the quality score you have. So in order to, like you know, some people can bulldoze, right? If you just pay a higher price, even a low quality score, you could actually achieve a certain rank. So do we have access to how much our competitors are bidding for the same keyword that I'm... No, you don't. So the thing is that you don't have access to it, but you can estimate. Suppose you have a quality score of 10, and you have a rank of 5. That means you know that your competitor is definitely bidding higher than you, and they're bidding significantly higher than you. Because in spite of achieving quality score of 10, you still rank number 5. So you get some... So I think search or digital, you know, my belief is, it's like a taking and compass in your hand and and finding out the direction. You don't get a blueprint per se, but you get a direction where you are uh, in the competitive landscape for every single keyword that you're looking for. So yes, I think we've actually made a good point. So the key point of the quality score is that eventually that should be a long-term goal. Increasing your quality score means you'll have lower click costs, more manageable click costs, which means your ROI at the end of the day is going to be significantly better. So, Looking at your quality of content on your website, ad copy relevance, it's all very important. In terms of bid management, so the key to bid management is also adding a target. So if you don't have a target, the bid management has nothing to work for. Usually people have like a cost per lead target, a cost per sale target, or for e-commerce clients, what the target should be is an ROI target. The revenue that you're getting divided by the cost that you're paying. And with SCM, the competitive industry, really you should be aiming to be breaking even when you first get there. So when we talk about rules-based bid management, we choose the keywords that we want, we choose the target that we want, and then the bid management comes up with a, a position or a bid on the page. So the portfolio-based bid management is a little bit different. So what happens with portfolio-based bid management, you define what your target is, your ROI, your CPL. What happens is uh, the bid management looks at the contribution of each keyword's contribution to the whole portfolio. So let's take the example of cheap flights, a very competitive keyword. So a client might be uh, investing in this particular keyword quite heavily, and this keyword might be above the CPA target, the cost per conversion target they want. So in a very simple system, you would bid that keyword down. But if this keyword is driving 90% of all your sales and all of your revenue, it doesn't make sense to be bidding it down. In this case, the bid management will still bid that keyword up, even though it's below the target, and it will offset that by reducing the bids on other keywords, because it knows that this keyword is the most important keyword in the, in the account. And that is a portfolio maximization. So this is a screenshot from one of the, one of the campaign automation tools, Kenshu. And what happens here is that we've got budget across the bottom, the daily budget. The light green line there is the number of sales or the, the amount of revenue that you're getting through. So what happens is that you expect as you increase spend, you get more clicks and you get more sales. But what happens, there's a point where that light green line becomes flat. That's the point of diminishing returns. So what that means is, at that point, even if you spend more on SDM, you're not going to get any more return. So these tools allow you to say, based on my ROI target, if I want to break even, it tells you the amount that you should be spending on SDM. Don't spend any more, don't spend any less. This is the point where you stop spending, because it's your portfolio maximization, the efficient frontier, as we call it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, just a basic question. Sure. Uh, like, who should be actually using this? Who should, I mean, who are the target? audience for this campaign marketing? So, so anybody with a strict target, for example, is, is one example. Anyone with a CPA target, ROI target that you need to reach. So even if the tool is costing you X amount, as long as you're achieving your ROI goal, including the cost of the technology, then you should be using the, the tool. And, and I'll, I'll come, on to it, I'll come on to it eventually in the summary. And really, everybody should have a go at using one of these tools when they're using SDM. Is it really good for the startups? Do the startups don't have the budget? I would say, again, I would not limit yourselves to budget. This thing might cost you, let's say, 50,000 rupees to test for two months. The learnings alone that you'll get from that will be worth the 50,000 rupees. Beyond that, you'll also get an uplift, hopefully, in conversions and revenue on top of your SEM activity. 
And so I wouldn't limit yourself to say we're a startup, we're too small. You know, you're restricting yourself there because if you try these tools, it works for you, you can increase your revenue 2x, 3x, 4x. And it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a small price to pay for a long term goal for your startup. So this is the next step, which is what we call dynamic campaigns. So this is the ability to create campaigns and keywords on the fly, depending on your website inventory. So this is from flipcart.com, and this is on their digital canvas page. So let's assume, um, that this is the page, what we want to do, is we want to make an ad for the Fujifilm Fine Pits C20. So what we normally do, is we go through this process that Amit took us through earlier, which is create the keywords, create the ad copy, create the ad group. What these tools can do is a bit more sophisticated. We take the attributes of the particular keyword, so the category, the subcategory, the price, the inventory, etc. What happens is um, these tools onto Google and Bing, for example, will automatically create keywords based on the rules that you give. So one keyword rule might be the category plus the brand, creating that keyword. Brand plus the name, so Fuji Film Secret. So it automatically creates those keywords based on the inventory you have on your site. And also at the bottom, you'll find the dynamic ad creation as well. It has the model name in the headline. It has the features in the ad copy, 12 megapixels. Uh, the stock level, only 3 depth, and the price there as well. Um, at the bottom, you've got the display URL. So this ad has become immediately the most relevant on the search engine results page, immediately. You're going to get the best picture rate on this ad or this with your competitors, so your quality is high. And also, you know that you've got a product that you have in stock selling at a certain price. The user is only going to click on this if he has some sort of intent to buy. So your conversion rate is going to be good as well. So a big time saver, but also improvement in quality and conversion using this uh, campaign creation tool. And there's also something called auto keyword generation as well. So auto keyword generation is when someone types in an actual search query. So it's not a keyword in your account, but it's a query that's matched to one of the broad match keywords in your account. So what happens is the user clicks on the ad and he converts. So the actual query is applied to expansion algorithms and new keywords are added to the campaigns. So these, uh, these tools, uh, they concatenate words, they make typos, they based on this one search query, you can create another 1,000, 2,000 keywords automatically, just based on typos, misspellings, etc. So, and these keywords generally come at a lower cost because they're a lot less competitive. Misspells and typos, you know, not many people have those already in their account. Which is this tool you're talking about? So this is actually, a lot of the campaign automation tools contain all of these features. Um, so like, so Kenshu and Marin Software are probably two of the biggest things in the, in the industry. Um, and it, it, it'll all be in this presentation later, so you can, you can take it back and take a look at these companies. But generally, these companies are very well funded by Silicon Valley. Uh, Kenshu itself is funded by Sequoia and, and the Arts Alliance. So th they generally have very good funding. But it's going to be much across channel and attribution. So these technologies also allow the ability not just for SCM traffic, but also to bring in reporting for other channels as well. So SEO, Facebook, uh, affiliates, email marketing, all of that stuff can be tracked in this campaign automation tool. Even your analytics data can be brought into these tools as well. So what you're left with is one big dashboard that says, this is email against SEM, against SEO, against direct traffic, and it shows you the performance of each one. So you can make your decision of where the budget should go, dependent on the performance of each media that you get in your report. generally of your of your media spend but generally the more you spend or if you go with a partner agency what happens is they're affiliated with the tool uh, and they tend to get discount rates because they're, they're buying in bulk from these these tools so if you work with a, a partner agency you'd like to get a best rate than if you go directly but generally it's a percentage of your your media cost maybe um, you know at startup level spends maybe three to four percent of, of your spend but uh, if, if the clients spend enough with us we make it free yeah, exactly. So we can, as a partner agency, as part of the service that we offer, if we have a client spending enough with us, then you know, we make that as added, uh, added value that we, that we bring into the campaign. 
So I just want to introduce a concept called path to conversion uh, into playlists. It's a very interesting concept. So there's a few, there's four stages we say to making a sale. So the first one is the awareness stage. So let's say this display ad, this is a Google Display Network ad on the Hindustan Times by Emirates. So they've created a big banner to promote their flights to Seattle and they've got the price in there, very branded. Let's say the user sees this ad, he clicks on this ad, but he doesn't convert in this occasion. Let's say he comes back two days later and he types his flights to Seattle into to Google. Again, you'll see Emirates are their top position on this particular generic keyword. Again, with the same sort of um, copy, same price, etc. Finally, we've got the last stage, which we call the intent stage, which is more of a brand keyword, book Emirates flights to Seattle. And again, let's say this time the user clicks through, and this time he actually makes the, the sale. The question is, where should the credit for that sale go? Because the display ad was the one that made the interest in the first place. Without that display ad, you could argue nothing would have happened after that. The user wouldn't have searched Vice to Seattle, and then you may not have typed in book Emirates Vice to Seattle. So where should the credit go? In the traditional system, the way AdWords works, everything is attributed to the last click. So in this case, all of the sale value would have gone straight through to book Emirates Vice to Seattle. So on your reports, you know, that keyword's performing really well, but your keyword flights to Seattle and your display ad, zero conversions. It looks like it's not performing. So really, we should be attributing a, you know, a bit more accurately to understand the true value of all of the touch points before, before the user makes a sale. So just a quick stat here. So 45% of consumers search more than once on their path to purchase. It shows you why attribution is quite important. You can see what keywords people are searching on before they make their final sale. So, so how can we get over that, that problem? So these campaign automation tools allow for attribution modeling. So instead of using a last click, we can change it to a first click. So in this case, all of the sale value would have been given to the display ad because that's what drove the awareness in the first place Surely it makes sense for you to be attributing it on, on that basis. Alternatively, you could do divide equally, which means each of the touch points is given an equal weighting of the sale. So you can say everything deserves some credit because they all eventually led to the sale. And finally, we have custom as well, which is just conversions of revenue based on whatever percentage that you want to be given to each bit. You can define, you can say display should always be given 33%. The rest of um, paid search, um, give 50% to the last click and 25% to uh, the clicks before that, divide equally. So you can choose which attribution model. Nobody would expect you to come up with the attribution model yourself. Again, your partner agency would come in and say, this is the attribution model you should be using to maximize your conversions and your, and your revenue. So this is an example of party conversion. This is from the tool uh, Kenshu. It shows you for each sale that's made, every single click that's happened from every single channel. So you tell you exactly which keyword people have typed in, at what time, so everything is timestamped and date stamped, and it tells you the exact search query that was typed in, which campaign, which ad group it came from, so you know where to attribute the budget on a campaign level. And this is just some of the reporting that you'll get from these tools. So, for example, PTC Insights, Path to Conversion Insights, this big blue one says someone is coming in on a generic keyword. So for Emirates, people might be typing in flights to Seattle as the first keyword, and then the second keyword that they type in might be book Emirates flight. So we call that branded or generic entry because it's a generic keyword and a brand exit because that's the final set the time that they made the sale on. Generally, the generic keyword costs a lot more than the brand keyword because nobody will be bidding on book Emirates flight. They'll only be bidding on flights to Seattle or generic keywords like that. And this is a time to convert the report. It shows you for all of the users that come to your site how long it takes for them to make a sale. So this report shows you at the bottom, you've got your different time frames, how long it takes for users to convert. Uh, cumulatively, so it shows that users are still converting even after 30 plus days. So that's where you can decide what your cookie window should be. Should it be 30 days, or can I extend my my cookie window to a bit longer? Yeah. yeah. I 
So AdWords has a first place cookie. So when you install the tracking pixel of these tools, you can set the cookie length to whatever you want. So you can extend that cookie window. So AdWords generally designed for more um, SMBs, but tools like this can give you a lot more insight in the fact that you can say, actually, I want the cookie window to be longer. I want you to attribute versions correctly. I believe in AdWords, you can't actually change the, um, the cookie length. It's, it's just a given in the system. Um, and this is just my view, it's not very clear on this presentation, but just an idea of what the dashboard looks like. It just gives you all your channels across the site, and it gives you all the performance across the top. So you can see which channel works best for you on whatever metric is your target. And just a quick bit of reporting. So this is a, a tool from Marriott, another campaign automation software. It's what's called web query reporting. So what happens is all of the data is stored inside a, a URL. You store that URL inside Excel, and then every week or every day, you refresh it in Excel, and the data gets populated in Excel, it's like this. So this way, you don't even have to log into the tool. You just go to Excel, click Refresh on your reports, and the data is pulled automatically from the tool into Excel in the format that you want, with the graphs that you want, etc. This is from Kenshu, and it's just distributed across all of the channels, Facebook, SDM, affiliates, so everything will be connected at some point using these tools. The idea is that you'll have APIs to all of your networks, and from there the budget will be distributed optimally based on what your goal is. In the same way the bid management works, this is how the campaign distribution will work. Across multiple channels, you can decide where the budget should go, or the, the tool will decide where the budget should eventually go. So that's, that's what I have on um, this campaign automation. So any questions you have on, uh, I guess a lot of people have a lot of questions after the presentation, so I can go over some of those. Or any questions you have on this presentation, I'm happy to, happy to answer. Oh, uh, for a old campaign, would you recommend a CPA strategy or a CPA So I would always recommend, if you have any sort of conversion points, that you work to some sort of CPL target. CPC, you can always minimize your CPC. You can always get cheap clicks, but if they're not converting clicks, if they're not leading to some sort of action on your website that you want your customers to take, then ultimately, what's it, what's it worth? Does, does it make sense? Yeah. Um, I've seen uh, recently with ClearTrip or smaller websites that if you go there, do an intent and lead from there, um, pretty much the entire experience any search pages and button pages become about that specific you know, transaction. Yeah. So I don't know if you personalize for a person versus a check. So, so that's something called remarketing. It happens across the uh, display network. Uh, what happens is the user is cookie. He comes to a certain page that's going to clear trip. I'm booking flights to Bangkok, for example. And um, I've done my research. I found the, the rates of that particular holiday, that particular flight. I decide not to buy. I decide to do some research. So I make my trip, whatever. As soon as I leave clear trip, that user is cookie. And the advertisers then can choose how often and which creative and which websites to target, retarget that user on. So I can retarget that particular user again, saying, I know you were looking at this page before, come back and check our rates again. They might have changed, for example. So you can run a creative like that. But yeah, it's essentially it's done on a user or audience level based on which pages of your website your users have visited or where they've dropped out from in the, the buying process. Does it make sense? Is there a minimum set of keywords uh, or pages? Maybe like, uh, I mean, I know you mentioned e-commerce website. Yeah. 10,000 items and 10,000 pages. Yeah. Uh, is there a minimum set of pages you would say that this is useful for? No. no. Or it is like a 50-page website? It completely depends on your inventory. If you only have 50 products, then you only need 50, 50 pages. So, I mean, I'm into software and e-commerce sure. solutions. So sure. I'm the joke. We have 50 pages on our website. Yeah. Even 50 might be not too much, but so there's no, you won't get any benefit from creating additional pages on your website. There's no benefit to be had. If you start creating pages with irrelevant content, that could have negative effects. No, I'm asking actually, will this tool be useful for, for a static sort of website? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, bit management is still the key aspect of this, this tool. Like the dynamic keyword and ad copy generation through the inventory is one thing, but the bid management is perhaps the key aspect of it, and the path to conversion reporting that I mentioned here. These are the, the two key points for any static website. As long as you have any sort of goal that you want to reach, then this tool is going to help you achieve that goal without you having to go in 
and do the work manually. They have algorithms prepared to help you reach your goal quicker than, than you could ever do by yourself. Just uh, uh, the reliability is interesting quite evident for uh, large media centers like your e-commerce site, but for, uh, let's say, consultants, not into really e-commerce, it's sure. promoting. See, see, okay. I, I, I would disagree. I, I mentioned this earlier in the presentation. I think if you start saying that it's not for large centers, you, you're really limiting yourself and you're restricting yourself. Like I said, the, the, it's not a matter of how much you spend. If the tool is costing you X amount, but you're still achieving your ROI goals, including the cost of the technology, then surely the technology is benefiting you. If you're seeing uh, viable increases in your conversion rate and your revenue and your ROI, then you should continue using the tool. But any, regardless, the two months that you do your testing on this tool, the learnings that you'll get from a party conversion basis, what your users are doing on your website, how SEM fits in with the other channels, it's, it's priceless. So if you're paying, investing 50,000 rupees for two months using this technology, no matter what you're spending, with the long-term benefits that you'll get from those learnings itself will be the tool we paying for itself. I mean, just add to this. Tell you what. The way I have always looked at digital is don't look at the cost of technology, the agency fees you invest, the efforts you put in. Just compare to the media cost. So let's say you're spending 100 rupees, right now you're getting 100 clicks for it. Let's say you spend 96 rupees now using 4 rupees for uh, technology. What if we give you more than 100 clicks? The technology pays for itself very easily, right? Secondly, I think the challenges are that when you look at the part of conversion itself, the problem is that the person searches for a jacket. Or let's say, let's take, what industry are you in, sir? Consulting, sir. Consulting. So let's say consulting, right? The person searches for digital consulting first. Then he searches for uh, digital consulting in the manufacturing sector. Then he searches for Accenture, so we go for Accenture, clicks on it and converts and generates an uh, inquiry for you. Now the thing is, you would think that your brand click is giving you conversions, but it's not. The assist keywords, the two keywords assisted in that conversion are equally important to you, right? So these kind of tools, what it does is, uh, so we work with TCS, where the sales cycle is almost 8, 16 to 18 months, and we handle the search. Then what we've done is we've taken survey page for seven different areas, right from landing on a page, downloading a PDF, watching a video, taking a case study, the other three stages six to eight months away. We also track how many organizations, how many people from that organization visited that particular page and what are the things they downloaded. So it's like you're tracking the same thing in your 18-month period. But tools like this give you a lot of visibility in dashboards on actually how your campaign is performing. So I don't think it's a question of the technology cost. What you have to see is you were not using a technology, you were investing 100 rupees, this was the ROI you're getting. Now you're investing the same 100 rupees. vis a -vis, the media cost has come to 96 rupees, but you're putting 4 rupees on the technology. Is the ROI from that 100 rupees now superior or inferior? If it is superior, then regardless of what your spend cost is, it is irrelevant. If it's inferior, then go back to not using technology and then you should start spending 100 rupees without technology. Very simple, right? test it out. It will work for everybody. It's not necessarily work for everybody. If it works for you as an organization, continue using it. If it doesn't, stop using it. Very, very simple. Uh, does, it, I mean, does this tool have like SAS, SAS kind of services? All the tools, most of the tools, these are all SaaS. So you pay on a monthly basis, you pay, you pay on a monthly basis, you can start using it, you can stop using it. It's completely your fault. But minimum unit is month. Minimum unit is a month. But uh, a lot of these tools like Madden has a free trial of 15 days. So you can take a free trial of 15 days. If it works out for you, then continue paying them and start using them. The trial itself is 15 days. Is that measuring ROI on the Absolutely. In fact, this is a very important point, Rajin. I think Ronnie's going to cover it later in the presentation. What it does is it covers all the channels. So it tells you the first click came from Facebook, second click came from Yahoo, third click came from Google, and how you want to attribute the assist value of all these clicks. So all your display channels, your email tracking, if you put the pixel of the tool into the system, you get a common dashboard that this is how much you spend on Facebook, which gives you a lot of clicks but didn't give any conversions. But the third click, after the Facebook click, generally gives you a conversion. A lot of times you are justifying the value of social media. The social media is an awareness media, right? It creates the awareness interest and desire cycle of the buying of the user. The action generally happens on search. 
So that clicks that you got on Facebook are not wasted. If a certain click after that is leading to conversion, then that click would be happening on search. This will give you a dashboard to that, that is it happening or not for your brand. So all the dashboards out here that Ron will show you later, it tracks every single media and gives you one that's already report. That itself is of certain value, right? And how, how useful it is for, say, I mean, we are mostly talking about e-commerce or somebody buying at one point of time. Mm -hmm. But if I have like an intellectual property site, which is like, gives you knowledge, yeah. So how does it help? So, so it's not, again, it's not necessarily even someone buying something. It's someone taking an action on your site. If you want people to contact you, for example, you could use that as a goal. People coming to you, submitting a contact us form, submitting an inquiry, a lead, or something like that. Like, how would you measure success on your website? So it would be a little different from... So, but just, how, how would you personally measure, measure success you, you on your website? Measure, like, you could take a measure like time on site. So it has the person stay three minutes and optimize for that time. Right. So you can take so that's all, yeah, that's all analytics basically. Yeah. 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 Well, how many pages the person viewed on the site? What was the bounce rate that we mentioned? Are they engaging with your website? Which are very analytics focused metrics. So those, those things also can be configured in this tool. So they, they would be configured in analytics, but they can be pulled in by an API into these tools. So you have a one-stop shop for all of your SCM data and all of your analytics data together. So you can do your conventional metrics, like conversions and leads and sales, but next to all of these metrics like bounce rate. Bounce rate by keyword, for example, might be useful for you. Time on site by keyword might be useful for you. Because you can see which keywords are driving you there. And then you can set the bidding to maximize the time on site instead of maximizing revenue or maximizing sales. You can, yeah, so you can set the determinants to, to bid on whatever you want. It's interesting. And any other questions well from uh, generally SDM perspective that, that anybody has? Yeah, sure. uh, many of the users uh, in ACL, uh, they say that initially, like when they run the campaign, they are getting very good results. I mean, uh, their click-through ratio is good, etc. Sure. But after a certain time, it uh, you know that there is a deterioration. So, what are your thoughts? So it's, it's difficult to say without seeing the particular example that you're, that you're alluding to, but what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to start off their SEM campaign, take a lot of time to set it up, but then sort of not maintaining it. And that's a big, uh, a big issue. Because if you're not maintaining it, while your competitors are, like we mentioned earlier, your quality score is a benchmark against your competitors. So while they're improving your quality score, yours is falling by the day. So you, know, you, you can take all the time you want setting up an SEM campaign, but if you're not trained in how to maintain it and how to um, keep the relevancy score um, high, then your, your click cost is likely to increase and as a result your cost per conversion, your ROI is likely to fall, unfortunately. So maintenance is, uh, is a key. And again, it, it, you need just to make sure you have the expertise. So either you have it yourself in-house by learning or you trust your partner. And you go with the partner that you trust that you believe can maintain your, um, your campaigns and, and keep your click costs minimized. Can you also create an alert kind of system that this particular campaign is not working or... Yes. Because we had run into this problem like, you know, uh, a few days back, I mean, uh, last month Rajesh Kanna died. Sure. And there was a lot of searches happening on Rajesh Kanna sure. songs. Sure. So we had created a campaign, but actually we figured out like that campaign was not working. People were clicking, but actually they were trying to come to listen to the songs rather than knowing about Rajesh Karma. Yeah. So can we create some kind of alert which gives you, you know, immediately Absol this is not working. Absolutely. So that itself from AdWords might be difficult because AdWords just has on your basis like conversions and clicks, for example. So alerts do exist in AdWords, but they only exist for your basic metrics, like if my clicks have gone up, but that wouldn't have helped you. What do you need to see? People that aren't spending time on your site. That's where your analytics of these tools come into play, where you say, tell me when the bounce rate is below a certain amount. Alert me to that fact. And it will alert you, you know, once a day. And it will tell you, actually, this is what's happening. You're getting lots of clicks, but your bounce rate at least particular keywords is high. So in this example, the rule might be, alert me if clicks are more than 50, and bounce rate is higher than 60%. 
So with more than 40%, more than 60% of people are only doing one page on your site and they're not really engaging with other pages on your site. So that might be one rule that you would set up in, in analytics, for example. Does it make sense? You, it would, it's not necessarily an AdWords thing, it's more of a, an analytics, uh, and if you have one of these tools installed type of thing. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, the click-through rate that you said uh, measures the amount of times that you show Google shows our ad, and uh, what percentage of it gets clicked on? Yeah. Uh, is there a tool to measure how many times my uh, ad got displayed as opposed to yeah. how many times it got searched? So that, you, you get that all in Google. In AdWords interface, you get exactly how many times each keyword had an impression. An impression is just the amount of times your ad has been seen. No, no, no. Uh, how many times did people search it, but my ad might not have appeared? Maybe. Yeah. A hundred times it got searched, but my ad only appeared once. So in AdWords, there's a metric we call impression share, and it will tell you uh, this is a percentage of the times that your ad has been shown on this particular keyword, against the amount of times it could have been shown. So if you have a 90% impression share on the keyword cheap lights, that means 90% of the time on that keyword cheap lights, you were there, 10% you weren't. From that, you can extrapolate what the total search volume for that keyword was. It's just what you have plus an extra 10%. Impression share. Impression share report from Google. It's done at the campaign level and the ad group level. You can't, it doesn't happen in keyword level, which is which is why setting up your campaign structure is, is very important. You need to ensure you have the correct structure so that you can measure things like impression share correctly. So for your main keywords, your main volume keywords, like cheap flights or flights, make sure you have separate campaigns for those keywords. So you can measure the impression shares of those important keywords by themselves. So click-through rate is by far the biggest, but what's the government? Yeah, by far the biggest. But it, it, it started to change a bit more now. Like landing page is becoming more and more relevant now. Because Google can measure the bounce rate. So if Google is seeing that your landing page is not relevant, that people are coming to your site and then they're clicking back on the browser, you can be you can be penalized for that. And ad content is always going to be important, but to be honest, Click rate is the best score because it takes all of these aspects into account automatically, particularly relevancy. Because people are only clicking on your ad if they think it's relevant. And click through rate is very important. Sometimes I may I may want to filter out my uh, the people who visit my website based on some messages on the ad. I may display a price and all that. Yeah. So based on that my CDR might go down. Yeah. In that case I'll get a lower quality score. But you'll get a higher conversion rate, which is the most important thing. So, but, but still, I'm getting costly other things. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so as long as those users are coming to your site and converting, you, know, you don't want those other people coming to your site because it's just costing you more money overall. Okay. So it's done at ad group level, it's done at keyword level, and it's done at account level. So similar to the way that, that um, I was mentioning earlier, that click through it, it's the same, the same history is done at, at all those levels. Um, so equally important to make sure you have a good account score as you do a good keyword quality score, a good ad level quality score. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I think so. I'm still going to be around for another hour or so. So, if anybody has any other questions, specific account related queries that they want to discuss, then yeah, I'm happy to do so over lunch.
I see, I see. Uh, so Google do have their own model. It's called double click search, but like you say, it's more equivalent to one of these. And this wild part it sounds like it sounds like more of a yeah, like you say, more of a low cost SaaS thing. But the issue with these tools, again, like unless you have the expertise to use it, even though the cost is cheaper, it sort of, it doesn't make sense because you won't be getting the true the true value out of the tool. So I I see I think uh, these tools are divided into two areas. One are SMB tools, one are enterprise tools. So if you take Kensho and Marin, are the enterprise tools of the world? Almost seven billion dollars of advertising goes through these tools, three and a half billion dollars each. Uh, there will be only maybe 5,000 companies in the world who use Kensho and Marin. Uh, but Google has more than a million advertisers. So the challenge with AdWords is AdWords has been made for SMBs. The 90% of Google revenue comes from SMBs. Uh, so it's impossible to train a million advertisers on these complex tools, and you need an agency, you need the expertise. Ronnie has worked for both Kensho and Marin. So that kind of expertise is required where almost 20 million pounds of spend per month was being managed by Ronnie. So when you're managing large amount of spends, enterprise things, AdWords is not created for them. The SMB tools, AdWords is your simplest tool, right? From it has uh, you know portfolio, it has uh, conversion optimization, it is free, it does what it says, it's easy to use. So SMBs worldwide, a million of them use it. Now training all the SMBs on a complex tool like this is not practical. There's a reason even Google acquires a technology. It makes it simplified enough so that a million people can use it. But the 5,000 companies, 10,000 companies who are the large spenders, they need an enterprise tool and this is what an enterprise tool is. So that's how we like, get your manual differentiate themselves these are enterprise tools. They have a lot of customization possible. They are very, very powerful, but it requires a lot of expertise to use all the features of the tool effectively. Right. Um, so looking at agencies like yours, um, besides setting up the objectives, you're, so you're just guide on basically the search engine part, like the copy, the, the homepage, the creatives, like, like, so how much am I looking at you versus looking at other agencies and that so, so see, basically we've always focused on the enterprise sector. Uh, we have been there for the last 14 years. Uh, as of day for yesterday, we were acquired by iProspect. Uh, so iProspect is the one of the world's largest search companies uh, uh, owned by Aegis Media and now Denso also. So I think at that enterprise level, uh, I think we provide a full range of digital consulting services. There are certain services we provide for you in-house, we have 150 people. But some services we would outsource also. So we basically provide digital consulting. But what happens is like TCS wants to do SEO, Newscom wants to do SEO, ICL, Lombard, Mockery. The challenges that they face are very, very different than a regular SMB would face. And that's where we specialize and that's the market we operate mainly in. Well, uh, generally speaking, if I were to just pick a budget and objectives, is that enough for me looking at a partner or do I need to more I think uh, the objective is most important. So there are partners who have a budget of 30, 40 lakhs a year on digital, where almost 30 lakhs of that is our fees. But for them, media cost is irrelevant because you know they can afford to spend 20, 30 thousand rupees for every single customer acquired. And because the value, the right value of the customer for them is a lot. So their media cost is very low. But the other things they're investing in, which could be SEO, which could be consulting with us, etc., cost a significant portion of the budget. So let's say out of the 100 rupee budget, they have 75 rupees is paid to us and 25 rupees is paid to media. Visa, we also have customers who spend a crore rupees a month, where our fee to them could be as low as 10 lakh rupees a month. Where they just spend 10% of the total budget, and most of the money is spent on media, like the clear trips, the travel cities of the world that work with us. It's, it's a different thing. So I think, depending on the industry you're in, you should see what your business objective is and how should you allocate the digital spends. Is it a consumer industry that means sold, take it online like clear trip? then your budgets have to be different. But if you are a B2B guy, where your conversion will happen offline, then per acquisition needs to be calculated differently and media should be calculated differently. So, I get the impression that this tool is not for us. Most of the 80% of the people are like starting up or have the intention to start up. So, so you know, when I bring back the same question that I answered earlier, see my thinking is, don't keep, in digital the first thing they should do is, Never keep a close mind. Start, yeah. So just start with an open mind. Let's say you're spending 50 thousand rupees a month right now. You're getting certain amount of ROI of 50 thousand rupees. Let's assume it's spent, percentage of spent 
it will cost you four percent of fifty thousand. So because you are not spending a crore, you don't have to pay four lakhs also, right? Now four percent of fifty thousand is let's say eight hundred rupees or whatever the amount is, a thousand rupees whatever the amount is, right? You pay thousand rupees for the tool. Now the forty nine thousand rupees you spend on media one thousand on the tool. If it gives you ROI, which is more than one thousand rupees, is a tool for you? Because if you pay percentage, right? A certain class and customer spends a crore rupees a month. It's been four lakh rupees a month for the tool, but you are spending fifty thousand rupees, then you only pay four percent of that fifty thousand rupees, right? So now, will it give you one thousand rupees of ROI, additional ROI? I don't know. Probably yes. But if you willing to spend the time and, and efforts to understand the tool, it can go beyond what adverts can do for you. Now that is the call that all of us in this room should take. Whether well, the additional ROI that we get into the tool, visa we are investing into the tool. Is it worth it or not? But don't write it off because you're small. Because the big guys are competing with you in a certain space, and they have access to these technologies. And if you just don't even willing to try out the technology, then you've lost it to the big guys before even trying it out. Right? So if you give a close mind, then you're for a long time here, then the big guys will beat you here because they have access to this. But because of the person you spend, you actually have a chance. You get digital, the cloud services that tools offer, right? It's a pay-per-use basis. You pay for two months, don't get out of it, stop using it. But my sincere recommendation is always try out whatever you can try out if it's affordable for you. Try it out, then discount it. That is not for me. Before starting off, no, it's not for me. So that's what my recommendation is. But of course, at the end of the day, you guys are not here to decide. So is it like percentage based? Is it percentage based? It's percentage of your media spend. You spend one rupee, they cost you four percent or one rupee. Of course, there will be some sort of cost. Minimum, minimum commitment should be there. So yeah, there are. But the thing is, what happens is that let's say the minimum commitment will be two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. It's not that. So they also have an SMB version, which you can work through a partner who give you access to these tools, which is like a certain fee per month, being put to media spend, etc. So what I'm trying to say is, there is a technology out there, which is is plus plus of AdWords. You can't afford it today, but you're aware of it. It exists, and you can try it out. If there is a free day free trial of Marriott, right? So we'll do a free trial. What if it gives you a lot of ROI, and then you can afford a thousand dollars a month for it, right? So then it's worth it. Try it out. It's there. It's out there, and it may just benefit you much more than what you invested in it. So I wanted to go back to that algorithm defined. Are these algorithms something that we define or define as partners, or are these like preset algorithms that come from students? So, see, most of these tools they have different uh, ways in which you can optimize the campaign, right? So, let's say there is a rule-based optimization where it says, okay, I'm going to be ranked number three for this keyword, regardless of what the price is, or I'm going to be ranked number six for this keyword, regardless of the price is. It's a rule-based algorithm. Then you can actually have CPA-based algorithm where you say, okay, I want maximum value for this CPA. Uh, this is my hundred rupees my cost of acquisition. I want all the clicks I can get for that price. Now you can go for portfolio where you can actually create separate portfolios. So you can this set of keywords or ten keywords. I want my CPA to be fifty rupees. These are four keywords, computer keywords. I want my CPA to be two hundred rupees. And these are keywords which give me an ROI of more than two thousand rupees for every single click. Then I want my I have no gap. Try to maximize it as much as possible. So when you go deeper into the tool, it. It is allowing you the possibility and the opportunity to choose what I'm saying. So you have an option which one do you want to use? Any other questions? Yeah, are we breaking for lunch? Yeah, I think we break for lunch.